I'm Yara. Um, I am here with Vince Wishart. And Hello. And we are going to be talking about his um, intentional tattoo process that he's created. So, are you ready? I am. Um, so what is an intentional tattoo? Okay, so the intentional tattoo is like a deep subconscious NLP process uh, that combines uh, hypnotism, NLP, uh, transpersonal psychology counseling, some schematic processing, and it all helps people like become really empowered through uh, processes called anchoring and taking the submodalities and creating peak states and kind of some scientific kind of language, but in the end, they end up with a tattoo that they can evoke empowered states in themselves by merely touching themselves and spot the tattoo, take a nice deep breath, they get the whole experience back anytime they need it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, how did you become inspired to create the intentional tattoo? Well, I've been around tattoos for a long time, and um, I started out in the biker shops of old. You know, and uh, rough, tough bikers and smoking in the tattoo studio and all kinds of uh, drugs and all kinds of debauchery going on. And um, I just didn't really feel like I was all that connected to that environment, even though I went down that road for quite some time. I just, I, I knew there was something better with tattoos. And then the more I began to research it, I began to realize that the, the people of old, the ancients, uh, actually did tattoos as a rite of passage or a spiritual experience. I wanted to bring tattooing back full circle to what it used to be like. But out here in North America, it started with the drunks and the sailors in the 1800s, and then the bikers kind of got a hold of it, and then it was kind of run by the bikers for a long time. Anyway, it was all, all about egoic nature and, and like, look at me and, and all that kind of stuff, whereas that's not really what tattooing was founded on or started for. And I mean, they've been tattooing since the times of the cavemen. With the ancient Samoans and the, the, the Tahitians and the Maoris and, and, and so many different ancient tribes have used this as a ceremonial practice and uh, as, as very sacred. And that's really how I want to work with tattoos only now. Huh. Nice. Okay. Um, how long is the intentional tattoo process? Mm, intentional tattoo process is usually around about half an hour, but it kind of depends on whether or not a person needs to like let go of uh, some other things that'll stand in the way of them getting to their highest awesome feeling. Um, oftentimes we've got to take some some other challenges of their day and sort of get rid of them, put them in a little box, put them far away, uh, make the picture black and white, you know, like these kind of things in order to defuse that angsty stuff that they have going on. And so sometimes it'll take a little bit longer. Um, what is the difference between an intentional tattoo and a tattoo ceremony? <coughs> okay, so the intentional tattoo process in itself is basically uh, the NLP um, hypnosis sort of thing. And NLP is kind of like the science behind why shamanism works so well. That's where I saw the two of these really coming together really, really well, is because um, shamanic process work is all about creating a new visualization for that person so that they can create new belief systems so they can have higher outcomes. And it, yeah, it's spirit realm stuff, but it's really about what the perception or what they believe they're seeing and then transmuting that or, or, or transforming that into a real positive outcome for them. So NLP is the science behind why it works so well. And so there's all kinds of different ways we can get into a person's subconscious mind and, uh, and create a higher outcome for them. So uh, the tattoo ceremony in itself is where we actually call in the directions. We bring in sacred objects. We call in the, the, the spirit guides for them. We do a lot of prayer and it becomes really, really sacred. And we have fire and we have smudge and we, you know, we do it upright. You know, I don't want to speak to all the different ceremonies because they're all different. But, um, uh, and, and we cater these ceremonies to the client specifically to what their needs are. So uh, oftentimes a client will prepare for their ceremony four days ahead of time. Uh, maybe they'll do uh, tobacco prayers for four days ahead uh, for half an hour in the morning to so sit with their intention uh, before they go in. Or there, there, there is also other ways that we prepare for, for that um, ceremony, right? The ceremony needs to be prepared for, needs to do things differently before we head into ceremony for days ahead so that people are really connected to that high intention before they go in. 
when we carry that kind of change and that sort of thing in our heart has way more powerful results. Yeah. Um, <coughs> how long does an intentional tattoo ceremony take? Mm, well, because of how different they can be, it can be anywhere from you know an hour or two to like three days. You know, so it's kind of it's kind, that's kind of a hard hard question because ceremonies are so varied. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what result results can be expected from this process? Mm, well, clients tend to. Um, be able to let go of old patterns and behaviors that no longer serve them. Um, sometimes a byproduct might be they no longer are a smoker, you know, something like that. Um, um, you know, they can basically take away uh, a, a part of the real estate. Let's say their tattoo is here. So if we're doing the intentional tattoo here, we intend at first we write in Sharpie what their intention is, some empowered state. We have them remember an empowered state and then uh, a time when and then as they're remembering that time i have them go into that picture and pay close attention to all the subtleties in the picture and start cranking up the volumes and all the tastes and the sounds and the smells and then create a peak state for that person once we incorporate all the feelings and we can expand those feelings bigger and bigger and bigger then we um, create a peak state once they're at a peak state then i begin the anchoring process and all the way through i'll be anchoring to lock them in you know as we get them up higher and then um and then we take the tattoo needles and re-anchor that thousands of times so in the future whenever they want to feel empowered they just take a nice deep breath and touch themselves in the spot of the tattoo and get that whole experience back anytime they want yeah amazing yeah um how long do the effects of a ten an intentional tattoo last oh they can last a lifetime yeah they can last a lifetime they uh, uh really depends a lot on on how many tastes and smells and and how many of the submodalities were implored and expand it on and maximize during the session uh, is, is kind of dependent on how effective it is. The more emotion we get involved with this and the more we anchor in that emotion, the more powerful it is coming out the back end. So it really depends on the willingness of the person and how willing they are to just go all the way. People who are willing to go all the way get the best results. Yeah, but it really depends on the willingness of the person, which oftentimes we can expand on to during the process too. Um, what is future spacing, pacing? Future pacing? Um, okay, so that's basically when I uh, have a person in the chair, they have totally are in the experience of these new feelings and this new empowered state, and they're just like vibing, right? Just, whoa! Then what we'll do is have them look back into their past at a time when they used to do something in a certain way, in a certain behavior, when they're looking at themselves over there doing that behavior that they don't want to do anymore, <coughs> and what we do is we have them look at themselves over here in the future doing a new behavior. And then what we do is have them uh, bring that old one into the new one, and then they basically model. They watch the two of them. One's doing the old behavior, the other one's doing the new behavior, and then we have them shoo, fuse into two and dissolve the old behavior so that in the future they can um, just by touching themselves in the spot of the tattoo evoke their tattoo of power so all that super um, enriched feelings will now enter into a powerful situation into any time where in the past they used to do an old behavior now they'll automatically do the new behavior by just simply touching themselves in the spot of the tattoo a tattoo of power they can re-evoke these super empowered states in themselves which they never had those resources before. Yeah. Um, I've heard that an intentional tattoo has reduced pain from tattoos being done. Is that true? It is. It is actually. So part of the part of the side effects, side benefits of. Uh, um, doing an intentional tattoo is that when we're doing this, we, I tend to throw in a lot of uh, you know, subliminal language patterns so that they become very relaxed during the state. And when they're really relaxed, people tend to be forget <laughs> that tattoos even hurt, which is a, just a nice byproduct of, of tattooing. Deep relaxed states tend to do that for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what role do endorph endorphins play in the process? Uh, endorphins, well, I mean, they get people all hyped up and they get people um, feeling really good. It's like their body's natural feel-good juice. And it, uh, and, it, and it begins to flow. And so it's really handy to have those extra endorphins to have people feeling really good in their head too because when they feel really good in their head, then they, as we're anchoring in these empowered states, we're anchoring in that extra bit of juice into their super already feeling goodness and it becomes really magical actually. Mm -hmm. um, is there any experience or life condition <coughs> Um, or mental condition that cannot be overcome through intentional tattooing? Well, I mean, the whole purpose of it is not necessarily to be like a psychiatrist and help people overcome all their challenges in one place. However, a lot of it does happen to be overcome in, in, in the thing. I mean, NLP is, is so powerful. It can help people uh, that are schizophrenic. It can relieve them of schizophrenia in 15 minutes. I mean, it's really powerful stuff. And... Um, and uh, once, we, once we know the language of the subconscious mind, then we can transform a lot of things. But the, really the intention of what I'm doing is, is to create a superpower state for people. That, but while I'm in there, oftentimes I find other things that need addressing. <laughs> and so then I have other processes I can offer afterward in my NLP or hypnosis or transpersonal psychology counseling or whatever. We can, we can serve those people in other ways, you see? Yeah. yeah. Um, is it helpful for friends or and family to um, be there during the process? Well, let me answer that with a question. Do you think it would be valuable for you to have them there? Um, I think depending on what the... Um, what they're ex like, I think depending on what they've chosen for their um, high state, high, high, um, I'm sorry, I'm blank. Um, it's all good. Um, it's all good. <laughs> it does help. Obviously, I mean, it can help or it can't. You know, some people yeah. maybe won't, it won't be a benefit, maybe it will be a benefit. Yeah. Usually, I'll try to find some way to make it a benefit, of course, if we want them there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's all about perception. What we yeah. perceive, we believe, right? And uh, so if we change the perception about something, then all of a sudden now it becomes available or acceptable or whatever. It's yeah. just all about perception. Everything's a gift. Mm -hmm. If we can view everything as a gift, it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, where do these tattoos take place? Hmm, well, uh, sometimes I travel nomadically with it. And um, the spaces that I prefer when I'm doing that are the ones that are quieter, smaller tattoo studios where there's less ambient noise and chaos and kerfuffle. It's easier to get a person into their, into their, um, into their deep trance states when there, uh, there isn't as much noise and things going on, but I mean, it's I like the challenge of working in a busy, chaotic studio and doing it there as well. So I, you know what? For me, it doesn't really matter. I, I kind of like the challenge all the way around. But sometimes for other people, chaos and stuff like that is hard. Like a lot of people's complaints about tattoo studios is the heavy metal music and the chaos and the and the um, you know the angsty words and. And, and, you know, and, 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 and it's not really, a lot of them aren't a nurturing environment. And so if I'm going to be looking for a space to do work out of, I'm going to look for that kind of nurturing sort of like womb space sort of feel to it that feels really loving and inviting. And, um, and, and when I'm in that space, it seems like people open up more to being able to do these things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would motivate someone to come to you to get an intentional tattoo? Well, I'm not sure what everybody else's motivations are, but they probably find me online or saw a video somewhere or, or, or something. Cause I, I try to film as many of them as I can, of course, with the client's permission, you know, and the ones that give me the permission for that, then I like to put them up because I, I feel it carries a message, a really deep, important message. Um, and, uh, and so it's nice to carry that message and shine some 
some brighter light in the world where we can, you know. And I feel that this is a is a really amazing process to be able to do that. So, yeah. Um. Um. How much does it cost? Hmm, intentional tattoo uh, with me. I mean, my rate for tattooing is is two hundred dollars an hour, but I don't charge for the um, intentional tattoo aspect. Uh, People tend to have great outcomes, and so, you know, they're welcome to tip or whatnot. But I also view tattoo as medicine. So um, the medicine carriers of old never charged for their, for their, for their um, the medicine that they carried, and they healed people, and they did nomadic roots where they healed people, and uh, the shamans of old and things. And so that's kind of the way I like to carry that part of what I do. Tattoos themselves, they're expensive to do, so they cost a lot. And tattoo artists, they don't make very much money, like 20, 25 bucks an hour when everything's said and done, um, which isn't very much to get by on, but we all love our craft and, and it's, a, it's a neat thing. So, um, yeah, but that aspect of what I do, I like to carry that as medicine. So if people feel like they want to get into the spirit of reciprocity, which is the way that those old medicine carriers of old, they didn't just do it freely. Like if the person themselves couldn't afford it, then the rest of the village would step up and say, hey, I'd like to pay for this person to have an intentional tattoo. So with what I do, I also have a scholarship program. And that scholarship program can help people uh, like that, you know, get, get the thing paid for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, many counseling services provide um, their services on a sliding scale based on income. Is that something you... Mm, not so much on the income, but I do, uh, I do, like I say, have that scholarship program that people can get involved with. So when a person is finished their tattoo, sometimes in lieu of a tip, they'll, they'll put money into the um, scholarship fund so that the next person can have this medicine, right? And, uh, and that's been done for me in, in personal development programs and some, some education programs and stuff. So I like to pay it forward. What's been given me freely, I'd like to pay forward myself freely and give that... Uh, spirit of reciprocity, uh, a chance to flourish. And so those that are of means can, can give a little more, and those who aren't of means can do what they can. The actual cost of tattooing is the cost of tattooing. There's not too much we can do about the cost of tattooing. It's sort of stuck there. It's this really expensive thing to do. You know, the supplies are really expensive, all that stuff. But the rest of it, um, that part, I can actually approach, approach as tattoo medicine. Which I've written an article about here recently too. Yeah, it's been interesting. Yeah. Um, amazing. Again, as always. Um, can you subsidize someone else's subconscious subconscious journey? Um, yeah. Well, like I say, through that um, through that subsidy program, then uh, you know they can give that journey to someone else. You know, if, if that's what they so so choose to do, that's kind of a neat neat thing to offer. Mm -hmm. um, deep healings require deep process work. Can you tell me more about the deep explorations? What happens if a client goes into an old tantrum? An old trauma? Trauma. An old trauma. Well, um, traumas are a serious thing, and that's why people don't want to do this at home. They don't want to see one of my videos online and say, hey, I'm going to give that a try. This takes a lot of training. A lot of training this is serious business if we put someone into a trauma we can have them go catatonic or something like this is really serious this is serious psychiatry type business and a lot of people carry a lot of past traumas you know sometimes it isn't even of this lifetime it may have been ancestral stuff handed to them like you know there's some heavy duty stuff going on in this world and you know I've been blessed to go through some of those things myself and to come out the other side a little more healed and so therefore that's like the medicine I want to carry, right? I really love to help people step into those traumas and step and launch them up into the light on the other side where they can just bask in it. But sometimes we've got to go a little bit dark and deep, get down to the nitty gritty before we can launch up into the other side. And that's what I do over at Love Medicine. I love it and I have lovemedicine.ca and we heal a lot of people. We go into the deepest, darkest parts of people and launch them up in the light on the other side. So they are free and clear of all means and encumbrances from that point forward, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's basically what the shamans of old used to do as well, you know? And, uh, and the counseling background uh, is, is really, really good for that, especially particular school we went to. 
maybe I'm a little biased. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, get off topic. <laughs> Tell me more about the environment. I'm very auto. <laughs> uh, um, I'm very auto rep- representational system. I'm told. Um, sounds are very important to me. I'm very sensitive to outside influence of sound. I'm easily distracted. Mm-hmm. I see that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so an audio digital is a uh, is is like a person who would be like an architect or something like that, and a person who's audio. You know, they hear sounds, and and that's what mostly they they listen to things. You know, to have understanding. Uh, visual people, they see things. Um, there's also people who are kinesthetic, so, so they feel things. So uh, if I'm talking, like there's things called language patterns. So if I'm talking to someone who's kinesthetic, that'd be a deep feeler, right? A real soulful person. Then I would say, how does that feel to hear that? And that would be, that would be a language pattern. Because if I said um, to a person, um, like if I said to them, how does that, how do, how do you see this? They, they wouldn't comprehend it as much as they would if they heard the word feel. Because mm-hmm. they feel things. They feel mm-hmm. things, right? That's their main representation system is feelings. So when we're talking to people like that, we want to find those words that we can connect to to d- develop rapport. Because when we can develop really good rapport with people, then we can take them deep in and they become very trusting of us. We can take them deep into their own subconscious minds and, and go anywhere and create anything in the mm-hmm. realm of infinite possibilities. And that's mm-hmm. all done through rapport. Well, the trust that's gained through that rapport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And audio digitals are a funny bunch. They're like architects and, and engineers and a lot of accountants are that. And they're kind of like real box thinking, right? Which is the opposite end of what I normally do. So it's been my greatest challenge in this whole thing is to learn how to how to communicate with audio digitals yeah i do the other ones really really good and then those ones are like the challenge for me so it's fun it's fun i like the challenge it's all good it's all good um oh are you the only guy doing this kind of tattoo in the world actually you know what um yeah it is you know because um I did find another tattoo artist who is a, a, an NLP practitioner, does some hypnosis, a lot of shamanic work, and her name's Lori Morningstar, amazing woman, and she actually lives like not all that far, like here in the lower mainland, and it's like, you know, in the whole world, I was sure I was the only guy doing it, and then here's this other one doing it, and she's not all that far away, so I'm actually going to be getting some work from her coming up, and I really like her, she's amazing, I went and tied some drums at her place one time, like she's super red road like earth goddess kind of kind of woman pretty neat so um yeah i'm really looking forward to uh getting some work with her and she did do some uh, some so a little bit of a an induction with me there one day and it was, certainly was done a lot different than the way i do it <coughs> but i mean we're we're different people too right yeah. so we have freedom yeah so basically yeah. the answer is yes i am the only mm-hmm. guy yeah okay. yeah so intention tattoo.ca is like my web space where you won't find anyone else in the world doing any of the things I'm doing. So yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And people don't understand it when when they don't understand something, they like. I don't think I'm gonna go there because I mm-hmm. don't get it, right? Or fear or something will will happen. That's why I've been collecting a lot of of testimonials and things along the way and filming everything so that people can see like, holy smokes, this really is amazing. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's a one person that'll tell you that's had it done that'll, that'll say that they didn't have a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all been great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So is that it? It is. Okay, wonderful. Thank it you is. for the great interview. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yara, let's give her a hand. All right.